Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Carrie Alexander, and I'm here with Crosswave's lead pastor, Tim Steele. How you doing, Carrie? Good. Thanks for being here. Oh, looking forward to it. <laughs> so, um, one of the questions I know you get asked a lot about is the brick and mortar churches. Mm -hmm. Crosswave's church was started as a strategic mission, right. not because you're against traditional brick and mortar churches, correct? Absolutely. That we we are not against any church. We're all on the same team. Mm -hmm. um, we, Crosswaves was designed for the person uh, who wants to know what the Bible says. However, they just don't want to go to church to learn what the Bible says. And there's a lot of people. Is What's a lot of people? Well, you know, church strategists say that up to 60% of North America, 60% of North America, and, and, North, and just in the U.S., there's 330 million people, that 60% of North America... Uh, will not be reached by the traditional brick and mortar church. That's staggering. So why is over 60% of America not going to church? There's a variety of reasons. Uh, right now, the traditional church on Sunday morning has about 18% of the United States population attending each Sunday morning. Um, there's people who don't attend on Sunday morning because they have no interest in attending church, maybe uh, they wouldn't consider themselves spiritually minded or um, they just don't understand why you need to connect God in the church in the first place. You know, I can believe in God and not mm -hmm. go to church. Uh, church is unfamiliar with them. When I was a, uh, early on in my ministry, um, and even as a kid, when you did vacation Bible school, you know, kids who didn't go to church still knew about David and Goliath. Jonah and the whale, they knew those stories. Mm -hmm. Today, um, kids come to Vacation Bible School, they don't know any of these stories. And so you have so many more people who have grown up and never really been in church at all, except maybe for a wedding. Uh, funerals are being held less and less even in churches. So people just aren't comfortable in being in a church. And then you got people who say, okay, I'd like to go to church because I really would like to know what the Bible has to say but they're confused about all the different uh, denominational names and doctrinal differences. They don't even know where to start, even though the majority of us really agree. It's like three to 5% we disagree, and it's not even important stuff that we don't agree on. Yeah, I can see people being confused about the different non denominations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So any other reasons? Yeah, um, this is a big one. A lot of people just don't see the purpose for the church. They just mm -hmm. don't get it. Um, all right, I believe in God. But why do I need to go to church? Uh, I'm too busy to go anyways. Uh, maybe why does the church make me feel bad so I don't want to go for that reason? Uh, some don't go because of our change in our culture. Whenever you, when our country was an agricultural country, uh, culture, uh, we were all basically on the same time calendar. Yeah. You know, yeah, we all worked during the week and we had our Sundays free. Mm -hmm. That's changed. Uh, we got so many people that work on weekends. Uh, we got people that have uh, places up north, down south. They got, you know, their uh, their weekends are their free time, and so um, there's just a lot of different reasons why people don't go. But I really see the main is that people have disconnected us growing intentionally together, the way the Bible planned us to to grow. They've just disconnected that from the purpose of church. They just don't see it. Yeah, not being an agricultural society any longer, I can see the change in our culture mm -hmm. that we're just not on the same time schedule correct, anymore. Correct, correct. And um, and then we've got people that, uh, based on their past church experiences, they've been hurt, sadly, uh, and, and they quit going to a church, and they just don't want to take the time to go f find another church. There's, you know, that 60% is made up of a variety of different reasons, excuses, and I just think it's right. I think it's correct. There's a ton of people that just don't see a need for church for whatever that reason is. Yeah, there must be thousands of people in this country that would claim that reason. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing about it is they still want to know what the Bible says, and they still want to know about God. But that's what we have found is they just don't want to go um, to church to find that out. And so we're not against brick and mortar churches at all. 
this is a strategic reason to go after that 60%. You figure if we're at 18% of the um, of the uh, cult of our country goes to church right now in the north in U.S. Okay. in the United States, 18% goes. Okay. Church strategists say if we if we do the best we possibly can, we can double that and get that to 40%. Well, we've got enough churches out there that are reaching those people mm -hmm. who believe in church, but they just don't go, all right? Mm -hmm. We're going after that 60% that doesn't see the connection with church whatsoever, but they would like to know what God, about God and, and, and analyze that and work through that. That's who we're going after. So Crosswaves is not against the traditional church. I just want to stress that so much. Mm -hmm. We're not against the traditional church. We're just going after... A, a major segment of uh, people who just do not go to church for for whatever the reason is, that's who we want to go after. Would you say that uh, Crosswaves has become obsessed with the 60% of America that doesn't currently have a church home? Yeah, we have been because church strategists have been talking about this for a while now, but no one's come up with a real good system to, to go after that 60%. We believe we have at Crosswaves because we 70% of the people that attend a Crosswaves home group right now were not going to church anywhere before mm -hmm. they started coming to Crosswaves. So we know our system works, but the reason why we become obsessed is because we have friends and family that we love and care about that is part of that 60%. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we are so strong in really going after this. Since nobody really else is, they want to and they just don't have a strategy, that's where we want to go. And that's why we've really pushed for these uh, Bible studies to pop up all over North America. Excellent. So how do you evaluate how the Crosswaves plan is working? Well, I think, I think um, the way we would evaluate it is that, first of all, our, our goal is, is not to be about our ministry, but how we come behind people. And we've got people leading groups that if you'd have said to them five years ago or three years ago, even a year ago, said, uh, you're gonna have a Bible study in your home. They'd look at you and go, no, I, I, that's not me. That's not, no, no, it's never gonna happen. So for us to be able to have these homes all across North America where people are having a Bible study, mm -hmm. literally having a Bible study and having people sit in this Bible study and talk about how God is changing their lives. And if you wouldn't have opened up your home, um, that person wouldn't, wouldn't have the relationship they have with God today. That's how we, th that's how we evaluate it. And, and we just think it's working very, very well. You mentioned earlier that 70% of Crosswaves members were not attending church somewhere else. Why is that percentage so large? Uh, that's a great question. There's several reasons, Carrie. One, people who do not grow up in church feel more comfortable in a living room than in a church. Mm. They have one of those. Yeah. You know, they're, you go into a church, we, you know, and the sad thing is we got high church, we have low church, we have, we have all kinds of different churches. And so when you walk into a church, even myself, being a pastor, there are different denominations that I would be uncomfortable. I'd be just like watching other people, what would I do? Um, because I don't know the religious rituals or symbols. So you take somebody who doesn't been in church at all, they would have a fear of doing something wrong. Um, I know of one lady that was in a church and they were practicing communion. And so they passed out the bread, they passed out uh, the l little cups of, uh, of uh, juice for them to drink. And so she, never been there before and hadn't oh. done communion since she was a little kid, she got the bread, she ate the bread, she got the cup, she drank the cup, and she's sitting there and she looks around and then the pastor stands up there and he says, okay, those of you with your bread, take your bread, you know. And she sat there and she thought, I've, oh my goodness, I went too fast. She never went back. She told me she felt so embarrassed. Now, in reality, did anybody pay attention? No, it's no. not a big deal. It's not a big And even if somebody saw her, I, I've not been to that church, don't know those people. I'm just gonna tell you, nobody cared. Yeah. You know, she's yeah. new here, she didn't, no big deal. No mm -hmm. big deal. But it embarrassed her so much that she never went back. Yeah, I, I've heard several stories like that. And it's sad that one bad experience can yeah. sour someone's perspective on church. Yeah, it's sad. Yeah. 
So are there any other reasons? Yeah, I, we, we've learned that um, people understand the Bible better when there's dialogue, hmm. uh, which we call learning in circles. Um, what do you mean learning in circles? Well, learning in circles, it's either church would be learning in rows. You have someone standing up front and they're speaking and we're all sitting in okay. rows, yeah. okay? Yeah. In circles, we're all looking at each other around your living room, around your, you're around your dinner table, whatever, however you're running your group, but you're, you're in a circle and there's dialogue. And that's how we develop long-term relationships is with people that we dialogue with. Questions and answering them back and forth are engagement. And so engagement is dialogue. So when you're in a, in a Bible study and somebody asks a question and you answer that question, you're developing a stronger bond between the two of you as you're going back and forth. Um, we also are really big on allowing people to disagree. You know, there's a lot of, uh, the Bible is very clear on how to get right with God and how to stay right with God. Very clear. Mm -hmm. And yet there's other things that there's godly men through the centuries have disagreed on. And so we want our, our Bible studies to be safe places mm -hmm. where people can have a dissenting a disagreement and go, that's okay. We don't have to agree on everything. Yeah. I think know. almost everyone wants to talk about God in the Bible as long as it's safe. Yeah, that's the key word, safe. Yeah. That's huge. If, if you feel like you're going to be attacked, you're going to be looked down upon because of what you believe, you're not, you're not safe and you won't say things. But um, in our Crosswaves Bible studies, uh, we get people that have never been inside a church their entire life, and yet they come they sit in a Bible study, they get to dialogue, they get to talk, they, um, they develop a bond that, and a friendship that they weren't expecting. We even like to say it's a foretaste of heaven uh, by hanging out with God's people. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, our, our Bible study groups very quickly, and a lot of this is the Holy Spirit working, but a lot of, we become tight. It is a family, and you love your family, That's and it's a cool Part of that circle learning. Circle okay. learning. And it's just the engagement, the, the discussion time. Hmm. All right, one last question. Okay. What are Crosswave's core values? Our core values, we have three. Okay. Three core values. Um, and these are really big to us. And, and, and we have, we have uh, built Crosswave's completely around our core values. And, and this is simply this, that discipleship happens best in the context of relationships. And so if somebody's gonna grow uh, and you're gonna lead them intentionally down, down a path to become more like Christ, it's that relationship, that, that bond um, that helps us learn and trust the other person. If I'm gonna follow you, I wanna trust you. I don't, I don't need you to be perfect. I don't need you to not ever make a mistake. I just need you to be honest, mm. right? Yeah. And so um, we think that uh, discipleship happens best in, in, in relationships. We also think that ministry happens best in the context of teams. So at Crosswaves, we do serve events three to six times a year as a, as a, as a Bible study. We do um, what we call share events or evangelism or developing relationships three to six times a year as part of teams. We study the Bible each week as part of a team. So together, we're better. Together, mm -hmm. we encourage each other. Together, we're more accountable. Uh, if I say, you know, I'd like to start reading my Bible every day. Well, if I say that in a group, the next week, somebody's going to ask, yeah. right? Yes, absolutely. Somebody's going, hey, how, how's it going? Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I, I either started or I didn't. Well, you know, we're here to encourage you. Get it next week. All mm -hmm. right, I will. I will. And we're into taking baby steps as, together. If somebody started reading uh, a, a chapter a day, but they weren't reading the Bible at all, that's a win. Yeah. Our goal is, in our Bible studies, is to get people to become more like Christ, even if it's in small steps. And then our third core value is that our, our finances should go to people, not places. We're really big at Crosswaves of not being encumbered by a facility. 
And by doing that, um, we're able right now, we are giving away 60% of our tithes and offerings every, every week that come wow. in. We are giving that out in the ministry. Part of that is going into home and, and uh, foreign missionaries. Part of that is going into short-term mission trips that we at Crosswaves goes on and we're able to scholarship and, and pay half of the uh, trip of the people that are part of Crosswaves. And part of that stays within each home Bible study that they can spend in their community to bless it any way that they would like. But uh, we're giving away 60%. I don't know of another church in North America that that much percentage is given outside of the church. My goal is before I retire is that we are giving 90% or more of our money to ministry, helping people and not building up some huge church. And again, this is not meant to be a knock because we've been talking about how we're not against the, the traditional brick and mortar sure. church. But for us... You're able to do that because you're not a traditional right. brick and mortar church. Yeah, we want our money to, to really help people. And so we're, we're just thankful that we have a system that allows us to do that. And uh, God has really been doing some really neat stuff. In fact, in the last uh, two years, we've been to Thailand, South Africa, and Kenya on mission trips. And it's just, it's awesome. It's really awesome. But those are our core values. Discipleship happens best in context of relationships. Ministry happens best in context of teams. And our finances should go towards people, not places. And so everything we do are built around those three core values. Great. Thank you. Thanks for watching. You can watch for more videos on the website. You can find videos on mentoring and how to start a home Bible study at crosswaveschurch.com.